Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we come to the church and there are several commemorations. Lots of things happening actually on this day. It's a very busy day when the Feast of St. Olga falls on a Sunday. There's a lot of things happening. We have the Feast of St. Olga. Also on this day is St. Euphemia the All-Praised. We commemorate her miracle that took place at the Fourth Ecumenical Council. Very, very interesting, and we've uh, included that in the Sunday reading, so I won't talk about it here. Uh, but it was a very way, interesting way in which the Orthodox uh, were able to show that theirs was the true faith. And so I, I urge you to read that. If we run out of the copies, we, of course, post it every, morning, every Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. You can read it online. It's an interesting sort of combination that we have here today. We have St. Olga, equal to the Apostles, one of the greatest of, you may say, the Russian saints. Of course, at that time, Russia was just some, some dream in the future, I suppose. This was Rus we are talking about here. And from these people came uh, Ukrainians, Russians, and Belarusians, and we have a shared, you may say, uh, sort of core, beginning before St. Olga, but she is a very important turning point in the history of Christianity in this area. She accepted Christianity when there were still two parallel societies in Rus, a pagan society and a Christian society. And whether you are a person of faith or even if you are someone who is not, if you look just from a secular point of view, you can see very clearly these two societies existing. For instance, if you look at how the peace treaties were, were uh, sworn to, some were sworn on the swords of the pagans, at the same time, it was also a special service was done in the church for the Christians. And St. Olga is known as the wise. Right? This is something that I think we should pause and have a look at. Because this is a very interesting and rare, we may say, a name for a saint. Equal of the apostles, a woman, it's already very rare. There are only a few. We won't ask you now who they are, uh, but we certainly comes to mind St. Nina, St. Mary Magdalene. There are a few, but not many. It means that she spread the faith as one of the apostles spread the faith. And honestly speaking, she really laid the ground for what would come later with her grandson, St. Vladimir. But let's go back to this wise part, because she was clearly wise. If you read her life, which is a very long one, interesting, so interesting, you will think, you know, sometimes the lives of the saints is like this one lived, they died, amen. But here we have page after page of all of the things that she did. So interesting, the way that she lived her life, how she ruled. And this is the first thing that I think we have to learn today, brothers and sisters. We don't know what our path in life will be. We try to project it, and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. We should plan sort of how we will live, how we will retire, all of this. It's all good. But you never know when somebody's going to die and all of a sudden you're going to be put into power. Probably won't happen to any of us. But nonetheless, here we have someone. It was unusual to have a female. It's unusual to have a female leader now. How much more a thousand years ago? But the opportunity that God gave her, she took and she used. And she used it for God's glory. And we get opportunities. We may not get the opportunity to rule, but we get opportunities. And sometimes these opportunities come in a very surprising and unplanned for way. But when the Lord thrusts into our hands the opportunity to do something good, the Lord gives us an opportunity maybe to have manager, to, to manage something or whatever it is. You imagine it. It happens to all of us in our lives. All of a sudden we wake up one day and we have a bunch of new duties and maybe a bunch of new power. Will we use it for our own personal gain or will we use it for God's glory? And it's important for us to reflect on this, and I think actually also to ask the prayers of St. Olga, the wise, before the Lord. So that when the Lord gives us something, we do it, we use it for His glory. Because when we use it for His glory, brothers and sisters, it will also be for our glory. We also have the Gospel of the Gurgensees. This is one of our favorite Gospels because no one can actually pronounce that name. Uh, and we sort of read it and we, we stumble over it and so on and so forth. The name is not important. What's important is what happens there. And this goes back to wisdom also. So I think that must be our theme for today. These people were Jews, right? And they were good, clearly. They were good businessmen. They saw a need and they filled it. And they were wealthy because of that. Now, the Lord comes to their land 
and one of their folks who is possessed by demons comes out. And they have tried to do everything with him. They can't keep him clothed. He's ripping these chains. It's just out of control. Out of control. And so the Lord casts off the legion of demons that are within him, and they go into a herd of swine, which is feeding nearby. The swine. You should think something's going on here. But we'll continue. And this miracle is actually such an important one that it is commemorated at every single baptism that the church does. Each one of us came to the church through our baptism. At that baptism, this miracle was remembered. That must mean that this is something important that we should be attending. Back to our swine. Here they are, full of demons. And they go running into the water and they are drowned. Alright? We lost some pigs. But we have here this person who no longer is possessed with demons. So the people from the town, they come out. You can imagine they have their crosses and banners. Probably they didn't have crosses yet. Christ hadn't been crucified. But anyway, they come out, you know, and they are singing and they are happy. And their friend is all, you no know, more demons in him. And they come to Christ and they say, go away. We don't want you here. What's going on? How did the miracle fail? Why did the people not accept Christ? But the miracle did not fail. You see, I told you one thing at the beginning that you probably didn't really notice. These people were Jews. They're herding swine. This is the black market, brothers and sisters. This is the this is the illegal drugs, even we may say, of the of the early centuries. These Jews can't touch pigs. They can't touch pigs. It's unclean according to the Mosaic law. They can't. Not only can they can't eat it, that's unbelievable. They can't possibly even touch the thing. Yet, they understood that these things were very tasty and uh, useful and so on and so forth. I think most of us enjoy having a pork chop now and again. In any case, this was like the black market for this pig meat, right? They were making big money. Big money with those pigs. And what did the Lord do? He was so insensitive as to save one of their people and to kill all of their pigs. So they said, thank you very much for coming, get out. And how many times do we do that with Christ? Let's think about that, brothers and sisters. Are, did they use the wisdom that God gave them to put their priorities in the right order? The answer is no, by the way. It's kind of a rhetorical question, but the answer is no. They did not. They had everything upside down. They had it backwards. They put the things of this world in front of the things of God. Right? We aren't subject to the Mosaic Law, so it seems weird to us. Why are they aren't doing this? But this was God's command to them, that they shall not eat these certain things, touch these certain things. And they ignored God's <coughs> command to them and did whatever the heck they wanted to because they made good money at it. How often, brothers and sisters, do we fall to this same temptation? Well, this isn't really right for a Christian, but... You know, I got a good tip on this horse. I'm definitely going to make money at the track today. Or this isn't really right for a Christian. Just fill in the blank, brothers and sisters, because what we are really good at, if we are good at anything, it's self-justification. Well, it's not really for a Christian, but this is okay for this time. Think of these gurgancies and all of their great living that went into the drink and was destroyed because their priorities were wrong. They did not use the wisdom that God gave them for their salvation. They did not value the things of God more than the things of man, or the things of this earth, we may say. And here's the message, brothers and sisters, that I hope we will all take home with us today. That we put spiritual things in order. That we put our priorities in the right place. That we decide that we will put God first. And moreover, that we will not be listening to this sermon and saying, well, I kind of did that more or less, I'm pretty good. And uh, I don't really need to examine myself now because I'm good. Those are not the words you will hear from the Holy Fathers. I don't need to examine myself now. I, I challenge you to read through every book of the Holy Fathers and show me where it says, I don't need to challenge myself now, I'm good you will not find it. Why? They didn't have that kind of an imagination, of course. They, no, that's not why. Because obviously, we are to challenge ourselves. Spiritually, we cannot be complacent. And so it's very easy for us to say, I got it pretty good. Like, my priorities are good. That guy, he's a mess. But I'm good. 
you know. And so here we are judging our brother about how his priorities are all upside down. And meanwhile, we won't even look at ourselves in the mirror. You see, when you look at the spiritual mirror, it's kind of scary. Because if you really look and see yourself there, you see where you need to work. <clears throat> so brothers and sisters, let's not let this be a Sunday of complacency. Let's not let this be a Sunday where we take the wisdom that God gives us and we put it away from ourselves because it's not really convenient to deal with that right now. Rather, let's let this be a Sunday where we take the wisdom that God has given us and we look at our lives and we order our priorities as it should be. God is first. Neighbors are second. We're number three. Right? In America, it's always, I'm number one. For Orthodox Christians, it's always, I'm number three. Because God is first, neighbors are second, and we come last. Brothers and sisters, if we can go forth from the Lord's temple today, and we can have that paradigm burned into our hearts, we have done a great thing for our salvation. And it we can at least go forth from the temple today and not forget that, even if we can't really put it to use yet, even if we aren't there yet, that God is first, neighbor is second, and that we're number three, then we will not pass by the commemoration of the wise equal to the apostles, St. Olga, without learning something. We will not pass the gospel reading of the Gergensies today and ignore their very bad priority setting. But we will look at ourselves and we will decide that today is the day that I put God first, my neighbor second, and that I'm really number three. And if we can do that, brothers and sisters, then we are not far from our salvation. May the Lord grant this to all of us. Amen.